Good afternoon and welcome back to another episode of the 32-Bit Rant and today we are going to be talking about these little marvellous devices if I can get it to switch on this is an iPod, clearly um, to be more specific, this is a 5th generation classic iPod well it's a video iPod and I'm going to be going a bit more in depth I'm going to be talking about the history of the iPod and probably why you should be picking these over digital streaming sites because I can give you a couple more I can go in depth basically let's get to it the iPod was the was introduced by Steve Jobs at Kino in 2001 and if I can get the, the picture to come up here you'll actually see the handsome fella himself demonstrating the iPod now it's important to note, right, these iPods, not this one in particular because there were superior ones um, and there were older ones, this is the fifth generation as I said. Um, so the first generation iPods were revolutionary in the way in which we listened to music because before that we had rubbish MP3 players that cost an absolute fortune offering very little storage and everything. So when they came along with the iPod, it came in a 5 gigabyte size and was able to hold a thousand songs they claimed and that was actually their advertising slogan a thousand songs in your pocket i think don't quote me on that but anyway this was so much better because you could store all of your compact discs on it as long as you had availability with itunes which was a proprietary software used by apple for their ipod I really like the eyes, I do, iMac, iTunes, iPod, and so on. So anyway, the iPod would really look the parts if you're using like an iMac G3, for example, and that, that's kind of really targeted towards multimedia, media consumption, media making, and so on. You could just, pl you plugged it into your PC, your uh, Mac via the Firewire, and it would transfer your music. Compared to, for example, as I said, it came in 5, 10, or 20 gigs, and it's early variations and this was a lot more superior compared to this little mp3 player i've got here which has 512 megs of storage and it's frankly a bit pathetic plus it's only usb 1.1 1 .1, so it's painfully slow so the ipod held a lot of advantages using firewire because it could transfer it at a faster speed additionally it made it it was also more convenient than having to carry about a passive laptop like this Obviously this laptop's a bit newer, but you get the idea they were pretty thick and they were pretty heavy and solid. So carrying about something this size compared to something this size would make it a lot easier to work with. Fast forward another, I don't know, 15 years and iPods are no longer being used as heavily as what they once were. In fact, the only ones you get now are touch ones and not even the old touch ones, the modern ones that basically look like dumbed down iPhones. But I still believe that these iPods can be used for people who perhaps want to listen to music without having to resort to streaming services such as Spotify, who I'm just going to target today and run about. Anyway, I'll get to that just about now. Well, okay, we'll look at Spotify versus iTunes and what advantages that Spotify and iTunes hold over each other. So to start with, there's obviously pros and cons to each piece of software. For example, if you look here, there is an expansive music library with Spotify, which means you can search for just about anything. It's also accessible on nearly all modern devices, like smartphones and laptops and so on. A con of this is that it requires a constant internet connection unless you're using the premium version and it forces advertisements upon you, which may not be to your preference. It also limits choice because, especially in the mobile app, because you can't actually listen to a specific song from a playlist or an album, you have to listen to all of it. Pros and cons at iTunes, there are various, for example, music is advertisement free, you don't have to sit and listen to 2 minutes of advertisement to get 30 minutes free music. Your music is yours. Doesn't track your habits with algorithms, as far as I'm aware, I don't trust Spotify for that matter, but I still use it anyway for certain purposes of making playlists for friends and that. But um, I do feel that there's an extra level of control over your music that you 
there's, you have more control over your music through iTunes than you do with Spotify, I believe. It doesn't need a consistent internet connection. The music is always downloaded. You don't need to pay to download your music. Your music is yours. Problem is, the music is yours, which means you need to have it first. You can either buy it from iTunes themselves, in which case it can be kept in your cloud and you can download it, or it, you can add it via compact discs or whatever else. Libraries only limited, again that links to my last point because some people only have like a handful of CDs, other people have tons, so it all varies. Next, um, it's only accessible on synchronised devices such as my iPods or MP3 players and so on and the device it comes from. For example, I have an iPod which is synchronised with my desktop. If I was to then try to synchronise it with my laptop it would wipe everything and start again because the music libraries in both of these are different even though they're the same account. So I think that kind of discusses like, the problems that iTunes and Spotify users face and the advantages of each given off a somewhat balanced argument actually. Don't think I've ever done that before in my life. Alright then, let me just round this off by saying that obviously I'm going to prefer the iPod and I do actually suggest that you try one. If you can get a hold of one, if you still have one, try it. See if you prefer it over, like, Spotify. But honestly, that's your decision. But if I was able to pick for you, I'd say go with the iPod. So anyway, you've been watching the 32 bit rant. I had a rant, actually, about Spotify and how much I dislike it and how much I prefer iTunes and iPods. Could just be me, though. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and do whatever else takes your fancy. And I will see you all in the next one, which shouldn't be too long. Hopefully. Goodbye.